Hi everybody, it's Claudia from Create with Claudia. Stay tuned because I'm gonna show you my brand new puff quilt, the beautiful new fabrics I used to make it, and I'm gonna show you how to make a little cat quilt or doll quilt, something like that, using the same puff quilt technique. Today I'm excited to show you my latest quilt. It's a puff quilt. I am an Island Batik ambassador, and for the February 2023 challenge, we have challenges every month, for February of 2023, we were asked to do a puff quilt. And I have never done one before, so it was fun for me to do, it was exciting. And the fabric that I was, was assigned was one of Island Batik's new lines. It's called Broken Glass. It was designed by Kathy Engel for Swan Sheridan of Swan Amity Designs. It will be shipping, yardage will be shipping to stores in February of 2023. What can I say about this gorgeous fabric? Just look at those uh, rich, rich jewel tones. I absolutely fell in love with it the minute I saw it. I love jewel tones, um, so I wanted to highlight them. So what I did, instead of making it puffy on all of the squares, I decided to make it puffy in some of them and then some make it flat as you can see. I thought it'd be fun. I thought the flat parts actually showed some of the fabrics off a little bit better, uh, but you still get that great puffy look and that great puffy feel. It is lined with batting and then it is backed as well. I'll show you pictures of that. I'm showing a few pictures up on screen so you can see the whole quilt. It is so warm and cozy. I'm in love with this quilt. Uh, this one is not going anywhere. Um, I will say, uh, I'm not an expert at uh, machine quilting, so what I did, I started machine quilting and it was not working for me with those puffs. Um, so what I did is I actually hand tied the quilt and I'll show you some pictures of that close up too. Um, I don't normally hand tie my quilts, but this one I thought would be fun to do it. I did a lot of hand tying, a lot of TV watching, that kind of thing. Um, but I, can, I, I like the way it turned out. My puffs are pretty big, so I actually even put a tie-in in the middle of the puffs. To piece my quilt, I used Aurifil thread, I used Schmetz needles in my machine, I always do. And then uh, for the batting part of it, I used Hobbs polyfill. So like I said, this quilt is extra warm and I live in Western Pennsylvania where it gets really cold in the winter, so it's perfect for that. Actually, my daughter has already claimed this quilt. She loves it. To bind it, I actually did all machine binding. I normally do machine on the front and then hand stitch on the back, but on this one I didn't. Again, the puffs make it a little bit trickier that way, but it really was not that hard to make. So for my little bonus project, I always love to show off the fabrics that um, that we get. Uh, I made a little cat bed, and I, I hopefully you can see it okay. It's just a fun little bed. I would not recommend it. It's not an official cat bed or anything, but the reason I made it is this. I always take, my mother lives about half an hour away, and I always take her my quilts to show her when I'm finished with them. And this one was no exception. And um, she has a little cat, a tiny little cat, um, just had not, has never grown very much. Her name's Ivy. Well, as soon as I put this on the floor, that quilt, she made a beeline for it and would not get off of that quilt. Like she was giving me real evil eyes. She would not get off that quilt. So my mom said, well, now you just, you have to make her a puffy quilt. So I thought it'd be fun to show you the process that I did for making my quilt. And in the, in that uh, process of making, I'll just make a little bed for Ivy and make my mom happy and make the cat happy. All right, let's show you how to make these puffs. So I wanna show you how I cut mine. You can cut these, of course, to any size you want. I know different makers make them different sizes. I make the top piece seven inches square, and then the bottom piece is six inches square. So that's how I cut my squares. And I will say for the bottom piece in my quilt that I showed you a minute ago, I used like a plain white or even a muslin fabric for the backing of the puff. Um, to replace this part, but for this little quilt that I'm making for uh, my mom's cat, <laughs> I um, I decided to use this so it's reversible. I wanted to use show off those gorgeous fabrics. But again, um, and the other difference, excuse me, with the other quilt that I showed you, the big one, is it has a backing and also some batting in it as well as the puffy uh, filler that I use. So there's the big difference, but this is essentially how I make those little puffs. And then I'm gonna show you how I put them together. And I'll probably need, I'm guessing like eight or so for a small, this is, my mom has a real small cat, so I'm just thinking I'll just make eight of them. Great for a little doll or something, maybe a little doll's blanket. Although these do make big puffs, so you'll see what it looks like. But again, this is the backing. So we'll just do orange on the back. 
We move all this other stuff and we'll do blue on the front. And the first thing you wanna do is you need to sew around three sides of this square, but you have to gather it. And I don't measure anything. The way I do it is I will sort of guesstimate the center, just sort of guess, and I put a pin in there. And then I will gather, I will put a pin, and I apologize, I have a big Band-Aid on my, I cut my finger. You're just gonna line up, hopefully you can see that okay, line up the two fabrics like so, pin it, and then what I do, and here's the tricky one, hopefully I might try to zoom in a little bit so you can see it or hold it up. I put my finger in here, maybe, I don't know, let's see. It's easier, <laughs> when you, once you get going it's a lot easier. So see where I pin that, I pin that towards the center, I pull that pin out, and now it's gathered. Just fold it right back over that pin. And then you're gonna sew an eighth of an inch. You don't wanna sew that quarter inch because remember we're gonna piece this quilt and that's where that quarter inch seam allowance is gonna come. So I will sew an eighth of an inch right down this seam right here. Okay, so you can sort of see how that gathers already starting, okay? You're gonna do the, then rotate it one time to the left, and now you don't need that pin on the left side. So again, I'm gonna put my pin in. The first couple are kind of tricky, but then once you get going, this thing came together in a breeze. Um, you sort of get used to the process, and you can just, I just chain piece them. I did all of the puffs at once, and it goes really quickly, it's kind of fun. All right, and again, you're just gonna, I just put my finger right there and pull it over. So it's nice and tight, right? See how it folds over? Let me just push that up. See how it's folded back over that pin? And then I'm just gonna take that pin and repin there so I have another fold. And then again, an eighth of an inch seam allowance down this side. All right, there you go. See, there's another fold. You can see how you're just making room here for that filler. And again, these are big puffs. You could make this smaller, like maybe make the bottom uh, four inches and the top five inches, you know, however you wanna do it. So this is the last, this is the third side and it's the last side we're gonna do like this. So again, just sort of estimate where that center is. Pin here. I got to the point where I didn't even need to pin that center one. I'm gonna do that for you though, just cause it makes it easier. And then sort of pull the rest of the fabric out of the way a little bit, make it nice and straight. And again, there you can see it hopefully. See how I've pinned that. Now pull it out and pin it again like so. So you're all folded and it's even to that edge. And again, eighth of an inch down that side. Alrighty, so there you go. See, it's open on this side, ready to stuff, um, but we're not gonna stuff it yet. <laughs> so the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off and I'm gonna make, I think I'm gonna probably make eight total of this. That should be big enough for my mom's little kitty cat. Her name's Ivy. And when I come back, I'm gonna show you the next step in doing this little quilt. Alrighty, so here are my eight puffs. You can see I have nice big opening on all of them. Eight pretty different colors. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna sew together columns, not rows, you wanna do this by columns, and you wanna have that opening open to the right, okay? 
So the first thing you're gonna do is sew those columns. So I'm just gonna lay these out sort of in a pleasing, making sure again that opening's on the right. When I was making that quilt, I did one that was not, whoops, <laughs> so not a big deal. All right, so you want, and I made eight of these puffs, so I'm gonna do eight by eight. Let's do another, I'll do an orange. Let's see, we'll do an orange up here. You wanna make sure you have the puffy side, that, that side that's all pleated on the top. So do the, there that. Okay, I think that's easy. That's just, this is a nice small, again, my mom's cat is pretty small. So um, this will be perfect for her. She'll like this. This would be a cute, in fact, I may just make it six by six which will be perfect because it's nice and puffy and the cat is, she has a tiny cat. I don't know, it's a real, the cat never grew very much. So she's the sweetest thing. Well, she's sweet if, if she likes you. If you don't like her, she's not the sweetest thing. But anyway, um, so the next thing you're gonna do is sew together these columns. So you'll sew this one together and then this one together. Alrighty, so here are my row, my excuse me, columns. Um, they're all sewn together, quarter inch, and that's again, you're just doing the columns, and now you see now's when we start stuffing. And basically, what you're gonna do is get your fill. You can use all kinds of, you could even use chopped up batting or even other fabric if you wanted. I just have this big bag of this polyfill stuff here, so I'm just gonna use that. I stuffed mine pretty, uh, I stuffed mine a lot. <laughs> I like big puffy, I liked a big puffy quilt. So you're just gonna put it in. Let's see, I tried to also keep them all the same so they weren't all lumpy. So that's actually a little bit too much. You'll get a feel for it. And like I said, you may wanna practice a little bit. And then what I did is I sewed each one separately. I'm sorry, each column separately. So what I would do here is just like I did when I was doing the fold, put that pin here, okay, like that, pull that fabric over so it's nice and tight and lined up. You only need one pin for this and then pin there so you have that fold because you want that fold in the last part too. It's kind of hard on the yellow. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stuff the next one. This is easy, this is, cause this is really small. And those are about the same. Like I said, I made it nice and puffy. I like the puff. <laughs> And you'll notice I'm pulling it tight. I wanna make sure that this is nice and flat, this, and then when I pull this over, I just use my finger to pull it over so it's all nice and flush and you don't have any, you know, gathers or anything. The only gather you want is this one right here. It makes it really, it actually looks nice. It makes it a nice finished look. And then lastly, we'll do this one. And you're gonna do this with the second column too. We don't sew the columns together until the end. Okay, so those are about even, maybe a little bit more on this one. And then pin again. Just gonna show you again how I pin. It looks a little tricky, but it really is not. And once you get going, I'm telling you, this thing comes together really quickly. Okay, so now it's pinned. I'm gonna take this to my machine and it's a little harder because it's puffy now. You're gonna sew an eighth of an inch seam allowance because you just wanna seal up that thing, uh, the <laughs> seal up the side, this last side. So we're back to the eighth of an inch uh, seam allowance the whole way. And you may even wanna pin some more here depending. I'm not a pinner, I don't pin a whole lot, but, um, or you could use clips. I think I used clips when I was making the big one too um, to help you keep, make sure those fabrics are all lined up. All right, so here's my one column done. This one is still not stuffed. You can see it's nice and puffy still. The next thing we wanna do is we want to attach this column to the right side of this one. Okay. 
So you're just going to face right sides together, making sure, again, this opening, you don't want to stuff this yet. The opening's on the right. And we're going to do a lot of pinning here. Or clipping. I actually used, I think I used clips when I made the big quilt. Especially once it starts getting bigger and puffier. And it, it did get a little tricky to work with. And I will say, like I mentioned um, before, I... Uh, I hand tied that that big quilt. This one I'm going to see if I can uh, machine quilt. Uh, machine quilting is not my forte, so um, uh, that's why I did that. <laughs> so just make sure because we're going to sew now this edge. We're actually going to sew that quarter inch. I can't remember if I mentioned that or not. And you want to pin on those seams. Okay, and then we're going to just sew a quarter inch down that seam. Alrighty, so here we go. Now we're going to stuff the next side. And very easy to do. Now you're going to note, <laughs> and I, I, I tell you, and sometimes I will tell you when I do little errors on my videos, um, you'll see that there, I had to do some seam ripping here. I made a mistake and I stuffed these columns before I put them together. I totally forgot my process. I my mind drew a blank. So if you see that and think, hmm, I wonder what happened there, that's what happened. So I had to actually un, un, uh, seam rip all these out, and that way I can show you the actual process of how to do it. So <laughs> that's what you want to do, though, is you want to make sure you don't stuff that before you join the two columns. It just makes it easier to handle that way. And now we're going to stuff it. And... I'm going to go ahead and stuff. Luckily, see, I kept all the stuffing that was in it in balls, so it makes it a lot easier. I know how much was in it. And last but not least, this one was a little more than... All right. So, there you caught me. So, we're going to do the same thing where you're just going to pin that center... Move all that torn out thread. And then you're just gonna readjust that pin. A lot of pinning in this project. And if you watch my videos, you know that is definitely not my favorite thing to do. But it's okay, because for this, it was worth it and it makes a really cool quilt. All right, one more. And you'll notice, if you remember on my big quilt, I actually have some uh, squares that were not uh, puffed. They were just regular batting. Um, that was just my preference to do it. I thought it would change it up a little bit. But nor I know a lot of people do qu the puff quilt the whole, the whole way like this. So, And last but not least... And we're going to sew an... On this side, I would just go ahead, because this is the last side, I would go ahead and also, well, I would do an eighth of an inch on here as well, because we're going to put binding on this. So, eighth of an inch down this side. Alrighty, so here it is. Here's my little puff. Now, I will put binding on this. Binding was a little tricky. I normally like to do um, machine stitch my binding to the top, and then on the back, I hand stitch. This one, I wouldn't do it like that. Um, I'm just going to machine bind all the way around. Now, the difference is, so there's my puff quilt. There's the back of it. It doesn't look so pretty on the back, but again, this is for her cat, so I'm not too worried about it. But that is really the reason on the big one, of course, I put a layer of batting and then backing. So on the big one, I used, instead of these brightly colored pieces, I used some like white uh, scraps that I had, some white fabrics. Um, so this is the top, you know, this is the back. And you don't have to put batting in it too. It makes it really nice and really toasty because not along with the puff, you have the batting. Um, so it, it, it made for a nice one nice and warm for winter months and it's really cold up here right now but what I'm going to do is do regular batting just cut like a two and a half inch um, uh, strip and then sew it around the side and then that's all ready for my mom's cat uh, cat it is kind of small but I'm telling you her cat is really teeny I think it must have been a runt or something but that is how I made my puff quilt or pretty much how I made my puff quilt um, and I said earlier that I was going to quilt it I actually don't need to quilt it because um 
there's no backing on. I just realized that. That was sort of silly to say. I don't know. I may tie them like I did my other one, the bigger one. Um, but uh, I don't think so because the cat might chew at the string. I don't want her to get any string in here. And let me reiterate, I, uh, I don't know if I said that at the beginning. This is just a fun little cat bed for her cat. Um, I would not make this as a long-term cat bed. Uh, I just thought it would be fun to give my mom one. She had she thought it was so cute that her cat would not get off of this, this puff quilt when I brought it. Um, this fabric, I wouldn't use batik or anything for the cat. And, and it has a lot of strings on it and things like that. Um, but I just thought it'd be fun to, to take this to my mom. It would be cute for like a doll baby or something like that. Maybe make add one more or make it longer, you know, whatever. Um, just make it fun. But that's my uh, puff, excuse me, that is my puff quilt making process. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you give it a try. Alrighty, so what do you think about my puff quilt? And more importantly, what do you think about Ivy's new little quilt bed that she's going to lay on? Um, again, I don't want, I, this is my little disclaimer, this is not great. I wouldn't use batik normally for a cat bed uh, quilt. Like you probably need much tougher like a canvas or something like that. But I just thought it would be fun to take this to my mom and show it off. I think it would be great if you had a little girl um, for a doll or something like that. You know, a doll quilt, that kind of thing. Um, I will put binding on it. I did not bind it yet, but I will be doing that. But there you go. There's how I made my puff quilt. I recommend doing them. They come out, they're so unique and they're just so cozy and warm. I took pictures out in the snow with it, which I, I showed you a couple of. And um, it was actually really nice to have that quilt around. Thank you to Island Batik, Hobbs Batting, uh, Schmetz Needles, and Orofil Thread for helping me make this quilt this month. I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. I always love new subscribers, and I really do appreciate it so much. I do try to do monthly projects, tips, tutorials, that kind of thing, a lot of free quilt patterns. Uh, so I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.